Hey guys, it's Ryder here, and we just keep getting more and more amazing stuff coming out of Spider-Man Homecoming. So just a few days ago, there was this big kind of cast list that was revealed mainly just to kind of show and let everybody know who was working on the movie that day, on that set that day, uh, which characters would be involved, I believe, in shooting for that day. And we got a bunch of announcements and kind of maybe unintentional cast announcements. But it's really awesome because of one character, I guess a couple characters in particular. So, uh, of course, we know now that uh, Zendaya will be playing MJ. Um, so, just another quick thought on that. I've heard that she's dyeing her hair red or something like that. Uh, that was what was really important to me, not the color of her skin, uh, more the color of her hair. I don't know why, but I don't care what color your skin is. Um, I just, I, I, I need that red hair for MJ. So that was just my secondary thoughts on uh, the MJ new casting. I think it's going to be really awesome uh, if that turns out to be the true statement. Um, but, you know, we see names like, of course, Peter Parker, Liz Allen. Uh, we, we see Michael Keaton's name as he's obviously playing Adrian Toomes, the Vulture, the Tankerer. Uh, then we got this big announcement of Bokeem Woodbine playing Herman Schultz, the Shocker, which is pretty awesome. But, uh, of course, I don't know if you guys remember this, but a couple months ago when there was this big kind of casting rumor uh, plot thing that was, it was like all rumored or whatever, but it was this full-blown plot that was laid out like first, second, and third act, and the Shocker was involved in that first act, that like one of the opening scenes in the movie. Uh, also, they, they made a reference to Daredevil and that rumored thing. I have no idea what will make it into the final cut of the film, but uh, I was kind of expecting the Shocker, but this is really awesome that Bokeem Woodbine is going to be playing him. Um, then we also see big names like Ned Leeds. Now, Ned Leeds, the actor who is playing Ned Leeds, he is actually go he was at comic-con uh and i i didn't really make a big deal about it because i didn't really realize he was playing ned leeds uh this this guy uh, i don't really know his name off the top of my head but ned leeds so that name may or may not sound familiar to some big spider-man fans but basic gist of it is he's hobgoblin uh, which is going to probably be the closest thing we see to green goblin uh until they actually do green goblin which who knows when that will actually be who knows if we'll even see osborns or any of that in this movie you'll probably just hear about that um so i'm going to be talking about hobgoblin in just a moment but the other big deal was that there was a character known as just cindy they didn't put cindy moon on there but they said cindy now that's probably referencing cindy Cindy Moon, a.k.a. Silk. Now, I, that's kind of the main thing I want to talk about in this video. And that is the idea of other Spider-Man and Spider-Verse related characters coming to the MCU. Now, I've had these big Spider-Verse theories for quite some time now. I actually did multiple videos about you know, just talking about that. Um, and I, I honestly, I did not think they would use Cindy Moon before some of the other characters. Like, I, I'm going to be honest. I would have thought someone like Miles Morales or Ben Riley would have came before Silk. Um, but this is pretty awesome. We know we're getting Flash. Thompson. Uh, be, I believe Tony Revolori will be playing Flash Thompson, and we have no idea when or if he will ever become Agent Venom, or the Space Knight Venom, or anything like that. If he'll be chilling with the Guardians of the Galaxy when we get to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 9. So, whatever. Uh, but, you know, pretty big deal if they actually are going to be teasing out Cindy Moon. So, basic gist of this character, uh, after Peter Parker was bitten by the radioactive spider, before that spider died, it bit another person, Cindy Moon. Um, and the Cindy Moon was then hidden, because she, she developed the same powers as Peter Parker. She was hidden um, by Ezekiel, uh, I'm not too familiar with. If you read more of the Silk comics, you'll, you'll figure that out. Um, but... Then later, Peter Parker basically finds her, and she becomes the new Spider-Woman known as Silk. That's ba basic gist to the character. And you could easily see them kind of almost teasing that out in a movie like this. And I honestly almost feel like that's what they meant when they when they said that the, this new trilogy of Spider-Man movies would be much different than anything we've ever seen before. Look, I, I, know, I know that we got the original Sam Raimi trilogy, which I know is amazing. Everybody, for the most part. You know, I know the third one wasn't great. 
great for a lot of people. A lot of people hated that movie. Honestly, I didn't, I didn't dislike it that much. You know, weird dancing, Peter Parker, Tobey Maguire, weird goth hairdo. No, I'm not a fan of that. But uh, I didn't mind the third one that much. I'm a big fan of that trilogy. Um, and even Amazing Spider-Man 2. Hey, it's not the, it's probably one of the, it's probably the worst Spider-Man movie we've seen. But uh, I, I, I didn't hate it to the point of like pure hatred. It ruined Spider-Man for me. It didn't. It didn't do that. Um, it, it just it wasn't a great film. But my, the bottom line here is that e even when they rebooted uh, the Spider-Man in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 with Amazing Spider-Man, all that, uh, Andrew Garfield, they basically tried to do the exact same thing as the original Sam Raimi trilogy did with a new director, a new type of storyteller, new new look of New York City, more modern, all of that. And it was basically the same thing. This is going to be so much different in the sense you could already tell because not not that it's just going to be in high school and it's going to really feel like New York and, and not, not even because it's set in the MCU, but really because it seems like throughout this trilogy, we will be introduced to many big Spider-Verse characters, in which case I really do feel like. And when we get to Phase 4, when we get to the Spider-Man 4, Flash, or whatever, we will eventually see a Spider-Verse type movie. Think about it, guys. Did you ever think the third Captain America movie would be Civil War? No. No, you didn't. You did not think that. Because who would think that? Did you ever think that Thor Ragnarok would include Planet Hulk? No, you didn't. So I really do feel like eventually the Spider-Man movies will incorporate Spider-Verse. And Silk will probably be the first one teased in, in Spider-Man Homecoming. Then when we get to Spider-Man 2, whatever they title that, you know, uh, Spider-Man, you know, Spring Dance or you know, Fall. Well, yeah, because Homecoming is usually in the, the fall. So Spider-Man, Spring Dance or Spider-Man Formal, whatever they call it. Uh, then we'll probably see Silk develop her powers. Maybe we'll get a tease of Gwen Stacy, and then maybe, just maybe, they won't. They won't end up doing the big uh, multiple universe thing with Gwen Stacy and Miles Morales, and then we could just see them develop Spider-Man powers there. And eventually, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Ultimate Spider-Man show. It's not terrible. It's not. Um, and if you watch season three and four. It's uh, basically, it's just a Spider-Man team, and Spider-Man trains all these young Spider-Man recruits. You know, Ben Riley, and we see Scarlet Spider, we see Agent Venom, we see Miles Morales, and we see the Iron Spider. Um, so, which we already kind of are getting Iron Spider in Spider-Man Homecoming. But to me, I think it's awesome. I think Silk, Silk is one of those big new fan favorite characters, very similar to Spider-Gwen uh, and all that. So, breakout character, and I think it's going to be a really interesting seeing her portrayed on screen if this ends up being true. Now, the actress who is supposedly playing this Cindy character really looks like Cindy Moon. She really looks like how Cindy Moon would look like. It would really would make sense that also if they were to do a flashback of Peter Parker getting bitten by the spider, and then you kind of see like, oh wait, somebody else got bitten too, and they, that could just be it. They only have to tease it like that. Uh, you could also, instead of having Ezekiel have him, you could just have Norman Osborn maybe trying to, you know, uh, get, get his hands on somebody who is spider, you know, power related. Uh, but very interesting there. Uh, more on Hobgoblin. So, Ned Leeds, he used to work, or, he, yeah, he, he, and, and when we meet him, he'd probably be working with Peter Parker at the Daily Bugle, but he used, in the comics, he used to work uh, with Peter Parker at the Daily Bugle, uh, right for J. Jonah Jameson, um, and then, of course, he, he used to have a, uh, a big romantic relationship with Betty Brandt, got married to her, all that, and, of course, we all know Betty Brandt works for J. Jonah Jameson and the Daily Bugle. So, really excited and hoping that they, they get some sort of J. Jonah Jameson figure. I know it's tough to beat um, J.K. Simmons, but I feel like somebody could do it. Somebody could be an amazing JJJ, so hoping that they do that. I'd love to see the Daily Bugle in this world. Maybe they connect that also to Daredevil. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe Ben Urich, so we'll have to see. Um, here's the other big thing, though. Of course, Ned Leeds, he's a good guy. He's a good friend of Peter Parker's, and uh, he, he got brainwashed by Roderick Kingsley, who was uh, the original Hobgoblin, and he brainwashed him. He, Roderick Kingsley, original Hobgoblin, brainwashed Ned Leeds into becoming the new Hobgoblin. And then, of course, he became this big evil threat. He became the new Hobgoblin, this big foe and villain. And much later, it led to him being killed. So he died. Um, and Roger Kingsley kind of got away with all that. So 
you could kind of see they they almost incorporated some of that storyline uh, into the the first Spider-Man movie with Norman Osborn. Uh, it has a very similar type of feel to it, also. Um, and I, I really feel like, they're, again, they're just teasing out Hobgoblin. I feel like Hobgoblin would almost be just as cool to see on screen as Green Goblin. Because we've seen two versions of Green Goblin already. To see a version of Hobgoblin on screen who's incredibly similar would be pretty cool. Uh, bottom line, I'm really liking what they're doing with Spider-Man Homecoming. I feel like they're, they're, they're going to be bringing in this whole new element that I don't think we've ever seen before. And that's what really excites me. I think this is my most... It's, it's tough, because Marvel is really putting out three great movies next year. Guardians 2, Thor Ragnarok, and of course, Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming might be my most anticipated. I have no idea right now, because they all sound so great. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking about Hobgoblin, uh, Silk, maybe Spider-Gwen, some Spider-Verse stuff in the future. Let me know. Thanks so much for watching, and I'm Ryder, signing off with Infinite Attitude, and keep riding, guys. Bye.